Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Morning Prayer on Saturday, the 4th of July. And this is quite a momentous one, uh, just because this is the last uh, edition of Morning Prayers in this format that we've been doing for three and a half months, six days a week, which is quite an undertaking, really. Uh, we had no idea at the time how long it was going to go on for. Um, but as things are relaxing and changing, you know, the, the, the restrictions are changing, we feel it's important to move out consciously, move out of this time and onto the next thing. And it's, it, I really would definitely not just see it as an ending, but really a, a new beginning. Um, but I just want to say a big thank you to uh, particularly Phil, who coordinated things. Uh, for morning prayers, but also um, just everybody who's co who's who's co contributed to it and put time and effort into it. Um, you know, for each morning prayer, often there'll be uh, hours of preparation or even hours of trying to upload a video to send it to <laughs> to, to get it uploaded onto the onto Facebook and whatever. You know, there there've been there's a, been time and effort spent, and uh, it's much appreciated. So I really want to say thank you to everybody who's been involved. And I hope it's been an encouragement. It certainly has to me. Um, so before we go any further, let's pray. God, we just uh, we give you this time. Uh, we thank you that we can um, we can worship you and pray to you this morning. And I pray that you will speak to us. Amen. So this morning's passage is from Ephesians three, <clears throat> verses one to six. I'm just going to read it. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit, to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise of Jesus Christ. It's quite a powerful statement, isn't it? You know, that... Uh, just at the end, verse six, talking about saying the you know, describing the mystery that he's talking about, and it really is a an intriguing thing. I that's I suppose that's the amazing thing about mystery is it, it is intriguing and it's 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 hard to comprehend. Um, and you know this mystery of Jesus. Why why would you give? everything of yourself for someone who was undeserving um, it's hard to get our heads around and so so th there's 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 a couple of things that strike me the first is just that you know incredible reminder again of of grace it's so powerful and it is a, the most relevant message in the world um, there's there's nothing Whatever could could be better than that, that we are redeemed. Um, we're broken, fallen, sinful people and we're redeemed through, G through the grace of Jesus. I think it's amazing, but in incredibly mysterious. But the other thing, the other, the other thing that really jumps out at me is that it's for everybody. You know, this, 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 Grace, this mystery, is not just for the Jews. It's not just for Israel. It's for everybody. Every, I mean, it's quite... Uh, to me, that's really mind-blowing. Jesus doesn't discriminate. God doesn't discriminate. Um, whereas us, in our, in our sinful human nature, we probably discriminate against people every day without even realising it sometimes. But sometimes, even realizing it, we still do it. Well, God doesn't, and uh, and and I just I find that incredible, you know, uh, that this mystery 
brings the Gentiles and the Jews together. It, it, it's, it is mind-blowing. <laughs> and I, it's for our time. It's for us. It's for our town. It's for our region. It's for our country. Um, it, is, it is as relevant now as it ever was. And um, so I'd just like to, to pray for our town specifically um, that this place would be a place where Jesus is known, where the mystery of God is known, um, where God's grace and God's love is a hallmark of the place. So yeah, let's pray. Lord, thank you we just thank you we, when we think of your of of your grace that mystery of your grace and your love for us when we're so undeserving it's just mind blowing uh, it's hard to it's hard to understand it's hard to even slightly understand but it's real and we want to pray that over our town we pray that over Lisgard we pray that over this region over Cornwall over this country that you would be known that you're the mystery of your grace and love for the people of this place would be known and felt uh, thank you Lord thank you that you we are so in your heart you you love us you want a relationship with us you want to uh, be you. You want us to be fa your family. Amen. And let's finish with the uh, Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And I really mean that. Amen. God bless and have a lovely day.